and welcome back to episode three of Suplex Bitties. 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 Episode three. Usual crew here today uh, with me. And my, what is my top right? Could be something different for you. Is uh, Suplex Me Daddy, aka Diego, the <laughs> resident DJ. More eyebrows. <laughs> more, need more eyebrows. Um, we got myself, uh, Big Cheerio. Uh, if you follow the Twitter page at Suplex Abilities, you would understand. Uh, Chris Jones and our wrestling aficionado, aka Big Ooze today, Andrew Hunneman. Hi. So, what's going on, boys? How are we doing? Everything Hello, good? Internet. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. Everything man. good? Everybody, everybody tired? Absolutely dead. The bag's under my beaten. eyes. Absolutely beaten. So I don't think I've ever seen Diego in a college shirt. I want that on the record. Yeah, I know. I was saying, I know we were dressing up, dude. What the fuck? I know. I'm wearing a yeah. Hog Island brewery shirt. You know? <laughs> I know. And this thing uh, is... If you know about Hog Island, you know about Hog Island. Hog so, Island. So, listen, we got we got a bunch of bunch of wrestling stuff we're gonna cover this week. Uh, we're gonna start off. We had the pay per view last week. We gave our predictions, which I believe were very good. Uh, Diego, I know exactly what you're going to say. I will get it to it in two seconds. I I promise you. I'm pretty sure um, at least one of us hit on every single one of them. So yeah, it's either one of us hit on every single one of them, or for the, we hit on legitimate the majority. Yeah. But again, Suplex Bit is is brought to you by Couch Guy Sports. Make sure to go check out everything on the network. Uh, bunch of podcasts, bunch of articles, bunch of everything. The uh, website. It's, it's a, a Twitch. It's 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 what else? Videos. A twi- Twitch? It's a Twitter. It's a Twitter. Twitter. It's on. It's, a, it's, it's got a Twitter, Twitter handle. Many a it's Twitter a Twitter. Accounts. And it's, it's a, a website where you go on, you click the stuff, a, and you do this, you do that, you buy the stuff, you do this. Oh, it's on Facebook. It's on Instagram. Twitter thunk. Worldwide like, web. Like what? Twenty twenty one. Worldwide what? web. Who knows? So make sure make sure you guys follow that. So real quick, we're gonna we're gonna start off with the AEW papers from this past weekend. Uh, real quick, two things. The two things that we have to say is there were two debuts. The first one, uh, which was not who we thought it was gonna be, it was not. So it, it wasn't Chris <laughs> Bay. It wasn't Chris Bay, but it was Ethan Page. All ego, Ethan Page is a very good signing for them. He can easily be a very good mid card signer. He was a part of the North and TNA. Very good wrestler all around. I think he was a great signing for them, and I expect big things for him. And obviously, the premier signing, the Paul White signing. He out outwork everybody. Christian Cage. Has signed with AEW. We're not getting Hunnaman's Edge and Christian versus the USO matches in yeah, WWE, yeah, unfortunately. Sad. But, but Christian at Cage, least we said Christian Cage would be there. Yeah, it was Christian Cage. It, was, it yeah. wasn't. Uh, it wasn't Okada. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't Rob Van Dam. It wasn't anybody wasn't else. We said it was, it was Christian Cage. <laughs> so Which, real quick reaction to that. I'm fine with it. I think he's great. He's a big signing. I mean, obviously the hype behind it was you were expecting. Yeah somebody bigger but he is just so good and he had six years off or whatever it was best shape of his life just like edge and yeah. i'm excited to see what he does and i know we can go into that especially because they talked about him on AEW a lot but jones yeah. what do you think no i, I mean i definitely agree ahead, with, Diego. i definitely agree with andrew as well like the guy is like 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 to andrew's point he's in great physical shape i feel like he's got so much left in the tank Mm-hmm. More than what anybody else would think, so like at this point, it's such a such a in my opinion, like such a premier signing for um for the brand in itself, and so much to expand on, especially with so much energy that he's got left. Pretty uh, you know, to sell him as the guy that's gonna outwork everybody. That's a pretty big uh tagline. So yeah, it's a big Agreed. catchphrase for someone that's almost fifty. So I mean, exactly, you yeah. imagine he's got something something to prove. Yeah. I think my only thing with it is, and I think we'll get into it more when we go over uh, Dynamite from this past week, but my big worry was when they originally signed him was that they are going to throw him in the main event right right off the bat, just like TNA used to do when they used to sign the guys from WWE. Yeah. So that was my big worry some for that. Um, I'm hoping it's more of character building and he can put some, some of the AEW wrestlers over. Mm-hmm. But, again, we'll see what happens with it. Mm-hmm. But let's go over the pay-per-view. Um, I'll start with. Hit, I mean, we got to talk would, about the explosion. Or, so I was gonna. Explosion. So <clears throat> for this, I was actually gonna say, well, give me your stud match, and then give me your dud. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, well, you start. Geez. So my now stud about it. My stud match. I'm going with personally. 
the Young Bucks versus the Inner Circle. It was 17 in minutes and 50 seconds of pure, great tag team wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just the Bucks and were just – they were just so dynamic. They were just hitting their moves. You know, there were times where the Inner Circle, it looked like they were going to get it. The Bucks prevented it. You know, it was just such a quality match, and I thought that that literally set the tone for the rest of the night. And then the rest of the night, the majority of the car was very good. We had a couple of duds there, but other than that, it looked it was a very it was very good. The pay as a whole was yeah. very good. I think the only match that you could really say was I don't want to call it a dud because I mean it did its job was doing a uh, Miro and Kip versus best friends. That was yeah. a very short match. It was under ten minutes, and it just showed Miro not giving a crap about anyone around him, not even Kip's wife and just establishing that he's the man or, you know, a beast and a force to be, you know, reckoned with. And that uh, the little, little accolade that he put on Chuck Taylor when he was just hyping it up, he was just waiting for it, waiting for it. And then just yanked him back. Like he's going to snap oh, his neck. It just looked like everything. Uh, it looked, it looked <laughs> uh, very, uh, very painful. So young bucks is your favorite. Yep. I'm going to, tr- I mean, that was probably up there for me just cause I feel like they always open with a banger of a tag match. Um, I want to pick the main event, but I can't. I'm going to have to say Allen and Sting against Team Taz just because I love the cinematic matches. I thought they did a really good job. And um, as much as I might not have agreed with the booking decision, it was a really cool sight and a much needed change of pace from just the basic always in the ring, always in that. It just looked like the Boneyard match in a warehouse with a couple yeah. of people. So, Agreed. I loved it. What were your thoughts on Scorpio Sky being the face of the revolution? Good job, Diego, uh, on that <laughs> one. I'm pretty sure you said, I don't know if it'll happen, but you think he deserves it, and it'd be nice yeah. to see him get it. So mm-hmm. there you go. Uh, I like it. That match was good there. They do a lot of gimmick matches, so I feel like you kind of get a little worn out uh, over time. You know, ladder matches, battle royals almost all the time, and then obviously the exploding barbed wire death match. Um, ladder match was good. You had Cody do his thing where he just – got hurt and then had to show the resiliency and try to come back and win the match when he didn't need to. And everyone, you know, how much of an established guy he is. You're like, Oh, he's definitely going to come back. They kept him in the camera shot the whole time when he was getting his shoulder looked at in the match, Uh he came charging back down, ended up losing and getting beat down and Scorpio takes it over. But the misdirect is good. And I think it works a lot for the payoff. I could agree with you there. Um, I think my big dud for me, um, it has to be the exploding barbed wire death match. And I think it's only with the fact of we didn't um, necessarily get what we expected because mm-hmm. we didn't know what to expect. I mean, but it's when like they, didn't think they were going to kill a guy, but like it they should have like, killed a guy. <laughs> you could have done something. <laughs> and instead of having some sparklers go off, and I, well, before we even dive into that, Diego, what was your favorite? Was it ladder match or? Man, I don't know. I mean, the overall like event in itself was actually very eye catching. Um, but uh, I don't know. You had to pick because that's what the that's the viewers care about. I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, like I actually like appreciated the fact of the explosion in itself. Like I just thought, I just thought, I just thought it brought so much content onto it. For some, I mean, that's I mean, that's why we bought it. I mean, we were, I was gonna watch it anyway because I love wrestling, but obviously, you stick around. It was a fuck. It, it was a yeah. school night for us adults because we had to go to work the next day. <laughs> school and, night, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, being up till. Again, maybe it's just my old bones, but being up till almost midnight on a Sunday. It's painful. It's, it's absolutely good. it's absolutely painful. But it I would really say hurts. like I would say like my absolute like actual like favorite was back to that uh Scorpio Sky mm-hmm. um guess that I just came up with. You gotta be happy with it because no I, one else did a prayer. So I am I am pretty happy with it because as, as to your point, like everyone thought of somebody else, like uh like Penta or anybody else. So and just thinking, just thinking of like Scorpio Sky coming in as like the underdog and outperforming everybody else, mm-hmm. I was just like, that—that's that's that's what my, I can buy on. That's my guy. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think so. If I if I had to guess, I think I think literally we the most any of us got wrong was like two. Other than that, I feel like we're very spot on with the car. Yeah, I think so. Overall, I think so. Um, <clears throat> but to go back on the exploding barbed wire death match, um, <laughs> just. I understand getting uh, Eddie Kingston back in good graces with Moxley. It was a great story. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, they had their little joke where, you know, you know, Kenny Omega is a badass, but he can't build a, 
exploding barbed wire ring for shit. So, I mean, so the if- thing, all right, <laughs> the match itself was fine. Uh, you got your explosions, the, the gunpowder or whatever it was that would get into people's eyes and everything. Totally yeah. believable to an extent. The match itself was pretty good. Um, there was a little bit too much interference at the end for my liking. And, you know, you're reading the reports, you know, they tested everything beforehand. It was a much more extravagant uh, explosion. And then, unfortunately, once they got on, you know, the pay-per-view, it just, it just, it was a dud um, in every sense of the word. So it's like, cool, you have it, you tested everything, but how clueless it seemed they reacted to it was tough. Like, you got to have a backup plan. Like, you think if they, they're booking the whole Royal Rumble match and if the person who is supposed to win accidentally gets eliminated, they just go, what do we, oh, shit. Uh, yeah. Put them back in the ring. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Just throw them back in. Doesn't matter. Like, you got to have some form of a backup. And a lot of people were saying, you know, obviously you have Kingston going in to cover his buddy, uh, you know, Moxley. And you can explain that as like an adrenaline rush and all that or the heat from the explosion. Um, You could have like even had them set up and just be like, just have a confused look on their face. And then have, you know, Cal, Snow, Megan, the good brothers just laughing at him like they were just trying to embarrass him and everything like that. But instead they sold it like, like literal death. And I don't know. It was, I wish they had a bit of a backup and they've addressed it since. And they had Moxley cut that promo at the end, like Jones was saying, Oh, Omega can't build the exploding ring worth of shit. Uh, Like cool, funny. Hopefully get the crowd a little bit back with them as they leave. But um, I don't know. It's just, I don't like that. That unpreparedness is kind of tough to overlook. Mm. No, I agree with that. I mean, overall, give me, if you're grading it based on like a school, School works of paper, and you're grading it. What what grade are you giving it? The matches itself, no, just, the total thing, or just the bar? Just that. I'm saying the pay per view in general. Oh, I I'd give it like a B plus. I would have given it an A if they didn't, you know, screw up the explosion. Which again, yeah. you you can you can have that happen. That's just what happens. It just shows their lack of experience with big pyrotechnic type stuff. And that's one thing you got to kind of tip your hat to the WWE because you know they've been shooting lightning at the ring digitally since like 06 with the Undertaker. And they yes. always make it look out and they make the, the ring collapse yeah. or whatever it was. You just something, man. But that's just the mistake that they'll always have. People were saying it was like the end of their company and a huge debt that they won't be able to come back from. It's like, relax, guys. No. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Stop, t- stop talking to Anthony Pisano, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you got to let him make amends with it. And I'd still give it, I'd say again, B plus for me overall. Yeah. Diego? I, if I was to read it in a, in a scale of like one to five, nope. I think, nope, F's nope, letters, 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 a, letters a, only, a, a, a to F. We said in school, in school, like schoolwork. Well, in, in some of the schoolwork, you also do a scale of one to five, at least in my school. That's how this they guy, did it. What, what schools you go to? Uh, some of the harshest ones for some odd reason. That's <laughs> apparently just my motto. A self uh, form. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, say you no, say but, you say it's a four, that's a B. So it's like, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. me, I'm going to, I'm just going to be a little bit harsh. I'm just going to go with it with a C plus to B because okay. to me, just like some of the matches were so overhyped and expected more that like, for example, like the explosion match, like to me, one and five scale, it's a 2.5, way too much messed up. Explosions in itself didn't have all the pyrotechnics that Andrew mentioned too as well. There is a lot of creativity that could have gone along with that. And there wasn't that. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's, that's for me personally, I think the, like another, another big thing about the event itself was the Chris announcement, the Christian cage announcement. Thought it could have been a little bit better. They didn't do Uh, anything. He just kind of came out and signed his hand and then did his taunt. Oh, look at these people. Yeah. I mean, of course. And then there's the Miro, the, the Miro match. I'm like, that's at least a 1.5 match. That that thing was just pointless. It Didn't was a need waste to be there. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm giving it that type of rating. I'd say yeah. B plus. Jones, how about yourself? <laughs> I'm going. I was gonna go with a B plus until Hunterman said it. So I'm gonna go with an A minus because mm-hmm. I think it deserves a little bit more credit. Obviously, in my mind, it could have been an A plus if obviously the exploring barbed wire death match lived up to the potential that You're we going thought it could soft? no you i'm going soft all of a sudden since when am i going soft get the fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and obviously the Maryland Kip Sabian match, but I feel like everything else was a solid, at least no less than like three and a half. Yeah. I mean, you can you can make the case for Sheeta for Sheeta's title match, but other than that, I mean, that match was really good. I mean, I know it's like one of those things you're just kind of tired as the move <clears throat> went on, and you don't have a lot of background, like we were saying before with the challengers. Personally, between them two, they a bunch of history. And there's yeah. a bunch of near falls. It was a great yeah. match, but you could tell yeah. how gassed they were at the end. So I, I'd like, even give credit to the pre-show too. Yeah. The pre-show in itself was actually decent. Well, you got you got your favorite our favorite surprise too, or at least the internet's favorite surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Maki Ito, the the most cute, the cutest girl in the world. <laughs> Gotta love it. But no, she, so that, she's not watching your close-up videos of your beds. I'll tell you that. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move on to Dynamite from this past week. AEW, we're going to stick with it. Uh, yeah, just bang it out, sure. Just bang it out for, you know, it was good. We had... Um... Starts off with Phoenix and Jackson, banger, as predicted. Um, oh, obviously, yeah. Yeah. You know. They just, um, they're so good. Then they had, what was it? It was Cody Cody, and versus... Cody had a squash match. And then um, after he went to say something and Penta said something to him and turned into a big raw. Now we're getting Cody versus Penta next week. Which yeah, is Penta decided good. to talk about his pregnant wife. So now it's personal, which was like, I like that they kind of had Pentagon do a little bit of the English, which was good. And they had um, the uh, announcer. He's one of the backstage guys. Like uh, I forget his name. He's on being Fox elite. All the freaking I know. Time. I know who it is. Yeah. I can't think of his name. Right He's now. great. Uh, I, I can't believe I'm both drawing a blank, but whatever. Um, it was good to have him translate it and kind of be the cocky. Like, I don't think he's going to become his manager or anything like that. But no. just, you know, supporting his boy and just kind of laughing it out with him was kind of cool. Uh, Alex. Marvarez? Marvarez? No, it's Alex Aberhantis or something like that. I can't say Cause that. Because Ma- Marvarez is the guy from backstage. Yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> uh, and then we had Ethan Page versus Lee Johnson with QT Marshall. Mm-hmm. QT Marshall um, turned his back on Dustin Rhodes and the tag team. Battle Royale on uh, at Revolution as well, so that's also something they to look out that for. On Dynamite, had him walk out again. So I mean, I'm not necessarily invested because I don't think, I don't think. I mean, he's apparently he's a great worker, a great trainer, but I just I don't really care. Oh, thanks. He's not uh, not my cup of tea. Yes. Then you had um, the good uh, the good brothers Kenny Omega and Don Callis came out talking about <clears throat> you know their their barbed wire match, and then. Um, well, they had so they, the thing that I thought was weird about that whole thing was so they had Moxley and uh, Kingston kind of address it at the beginning, like after the first match. So they had Phoenix and Jackson, and from the get go, they were like, "Hey, you're going to hear from Kingston and Omega immediately following this match. So stick around to see what they have to say." And they ended up saying like, you know, Kingston ended up having like some PTSD flashbacks, so he like passed out and saw black and everything like that. Like it made perfect sense. I mean, Kingston can sell many things. You know, he's great um on the mic and omega and them i don't know why they had to come out and also bring attention back to it i guess i think it was more so i think it was more so to set up what you uh mentioned to me off air which was the the good brothers versus moxley and Mm -hmm. um Oh, what I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking tired, dude. Wake Eddie up, Kingston, bro. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh my God. So wow. I, just, I mean, again, so they had not, they, shit. they didn't have to, I don't think they had to bring it back up because obviously it's a, a stain on them. And, mm-hmm. you know, so they went with the internet was like, oh, okay, they can do a couple things here and say that Moxley was just a, you know, gas from his match and Kingston passed out from adrenaline or whatever it was. And then you can write it off as there was a dud and the explosions didn't go off. Or you can turn it to be that Omega and them just did that as like a way to embarrass them, like we were saying. But they doubled down on both. I don't know. I, I thought it was a little unnecessary, but then as you said, it's set up. Kingston coming out, Moxley came out, they fought, and then Christian Cage came out. And they had a little tease and a showdown. And that's you and I's biggest gripe. I know, Jones, is like, yeah. I'm okay with a title match because Christian's whole thing before he retired was one more match, as we know. Um, so if it's this one match, like maybe it's on a dynamite, I don't think they should build this to May. If like it's, it should if, be, yeah, like if it's like a one match and then like it's to put Kenny Omega over and yes. then it sets him up and sets like Christian Cage versus someone else, absolutely, I'm the, in for it. The but best if it's case scenario term, there, no. the best case scenario there is like you said, Omega puts over Christian and Christian just proves he can still go, and then they mm-hmm. just they split and they do their thing. Like I said, we just we can't have the TNA stuff when like everybody that jumped over 
became champion or whatever. And you can't you can't pass around the title belt. So agreed. Um, and then we had the six the six woman tags from um, the fallout of after uh, the women's title match. Mm-hmm. Kind of born. You get the TNT title, which basically was the they main event match. Like, it felt like the whole show they kind of embraced the chaos type of thing. Yeah. Because like even Sting came out for an interview, and then Lance Archer came out. And yeah. was talking to him. He's like, hey, Sting, it's not that against <clears throat> you, but just letting everybody know, I might not have won a ladder match, but I'm still going to pile up the bodies and stuff like that. Then they have the same thing with, um, it's supposed to be Christian Cage, Good Brothers come out. And then even the the tag match with the women seemed, like it was kind of, you embrace the chaos, I guess. But, you know, you had, um, I think, Maki Ito do her little, her little singing uh, thing before him, which I'm pretty sure is a thing she did and does in Japan. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of like one of her things. So that was kind of cool. And I don't know. <laughs> I'm indifferent. It, like I said, it's, I, it's, yeah. it's, it's a sour week for AEW, but I still, obviously I still enjoyed it. See, it was up until the last like 30 to 45 minutes of the show. Yeah. The TNT title match was great. I think Allen and, um, and Scorpio Sky was very good. Mm-hmm. We saw um, like a full on heel turn for Scorpio Sky. As Via after, heel hook. After, so, you know. after, uh, after he lost, he applied a heel hook and legitimately would not take it off. Mm-hmm. So, and the, the storyline there is almost kind of like what WWE was doing with Apollo recently, where he just kept coming up, kept coming up short, kept coming up short, and then had to change his mentality. And now, so Scorpio's becoming that same type of character where he keeps coming up short, he's doing the right things. Now he's going to start to tread that line to get himself his victories so you'll see i'm sure you'll see them feud for a bit yeah no i would agree um and then we had the inner circle war council so after mjf and chris jericho lost they basically like all right we're going back to the drawing board here so Mm -hmm. they went to the drawing board and then they're talking about it next thing you know sammy Guevara comes out shows them a video of in the locker room mjf basically saying how he wants to kick chris jericho out of the inner circle with um Santana Ortiz and Hager. Mm-hmm. Then they start their little. They work their way towards Jericho, and then all of a sudden they turn towards MJF. And basically, to MJF. it looks like they're going to kick the crap out of MJF. And the next thing you know, lights go he, out. Light. He says, "I wasn't trying to kick you out of the inner circle. I was just trying to start my own." And then all of a sudden, lights go out. You turn around. You see FTR, Tully Blanchard, Wardlow, and Sean Spears. The newest faction at AEW. I I pray to Christ they have a, a cool name. I really do. Oh yeah, uh, you, you'll wait. That'll be the big thing next week. I'm sure. I pray to Christ that they have a good name. I mean, dude, that was the like almost like a triple swerve. <laughs> yes. MJF thought like I just it kind of makes sense, I guess. But like if MJF's thing went plan went to fruition from the original thought. Or maybe it was one of those things where he planned the inner circle to tell Jericho while he was doing. It's a lot of it's it's a lot of layers, and you know there's been these rumblings for, God, what feels like the past year that they were going to reform some idea of the four horsemen. I think we even touched on it, yeah, uh, in the last episode or so, and we thought we were wondering who that fourth member was going to be. Lo and behold, didn't think it was going to be MJF and Wardlow. <laughs> so I mean, I'm excited for it. You'll get that banger of a contest. You'll get them feuding. Um, the faction wars they might even try to bang out that blood and guts like cage match they tried to do before yep uh and instead of the elite now in matt hardy you get inner circle and whatever they're gonna call mjf's uh, new squad it's it feels like it's gonna be an evolution type thing where they're they're taking all these guys they're gonna bring them up they're all gonna win the titles at some point and there's gonna be one or two or even you know three huge breakout stars from it I mean, everyone knows Wardlow is going to be. Everyone thinks he's going to be his a single entity at some point. MJF will end up being a world champion, I'm sure. FTR won the tag titles. Spears was the one that we were. I know Jones and I talked about. We're a little not sure exactly what he would do. He's great, but I don't necessarily see him overshadowing anybody in form of like any of the singles titles. So if they do some form of their YouTube shows and add a title belt there, maybe he can win that. Uh, maybe he can just be the guy that just puts on great matches like well maybe so i mean there for that little faction it wouldn't be a surprise ftr wins the tag titles back mm-hmm. you got um you got spears winning tnt title and then mjf being the world champion mm-hmm. wardlow for me wardlow is basically the security guy and basically all what he's trying to do is he's trying to um 
well, I'm, excuse me, what AEW is trying to do is they're trying to build him up to be their their version of Batista, in my opinion. And I, I think that. that's that's where they're going with it. Mm-hmm. So be beware because in the next couple of years, Warlow is going to be a household name and you need to keep an eye oh, on Oh, yeah, him. He's, he's, he's already so freaking good. Now he's finally getting the chance. <laughs> I know even um, you and I were texting during the show and – we even touched upon like where the heck's Wardlow if it's a whole inner circle. Meeting. My my, I've never seen my mouth drop. I was <laughs> like usually in wrestling, you nowadays you can kind of like pick up a thing or two. That caught me by surprise so much. I had no idea. I had no idea it was gonna happen. But hey, yeah. hey, I, I'll take it, man. I, it was it was very much a surprise, and they delivered, and they brought me back for next week. It was kind of stale at the beginning. Don't get me wrong, but the end of it was an absolute banger, and I would I would love to see how they progress with that. Mm-hmm. All right, we we touched upon AEW long enough. Let's let's do let's do some WWE. We'll start with Monday Night Raw. It was three hours. <laughs> they need to. <laughs> it was three <laughs> hours. <laughs> they legit need to go back to um back to two. I still think because SmackDown and Raw should be two and a half hours. Like I don't see why that wouldn't make perfect sense. Yeah, like, you, start it. Start like you start at like seven thirty and at ten. Mm-hmm. And I, I think even Raw right now is losing their focus so much. I mean, like an example, the, the whole entire amount of time that they give into this whole Alexa Bliss, Randy Orton storyline, it is long so term, long term booking, my friend. <laughs> Trust me. It's just, it, I, just I, I'm wait. Off, I'm up for long term booking and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. like the storyline's got to be better developed. I think it's the, so milked at this point. I that think the just, biggest issue that they did exhausting. with that, the whole thing there is once they had Orton burn the fiend alive. Yeah, you shouldn't have had Alexa show back up so soon. You could have given it a exactly. Month. exactly, and you could have been you could have been two weeks behind on it, and you're getting mm-hmm. close to Mania where you're going to yep. get a big payoff. At this but, point, at this point right now, the storyline is just so centrically posted on Alexa just sticking around rather than mm-hmm. what's next within the storyline that's yeah. what, that's where i'm like you, you're staying too thick into that story well you know it's going to be a firefly funhouse match at Mania oh absolutely like last year so absolutely. it's like it's tough to even it's so long, hard to make a, a rivalry last what what's that going to be three and a half months yeah when it finally comes to fruition maybe more. exactly exactly yep. so i mean i can't wait until the during the firehouse fun house match, firefly yeah. fun house match, Jesus Christ Jones, figure it out. Fucking white <laughs> that dude. we see that we literally see the stages of Orton. Like we see Evolution Orton, we see Legend Killer Orton. Oh, I need, we I need injury up on the shoulder, Randy Orton. We need psychotic Orton when Triple H spit him out of his house. Like we need. <laughs> oh my god, I remember I need, that. I need, need bull cut, I need bowl cut Randy Orton from 2002 that would yep. show up and tell us his shoulder was at 46.876. Yep. And then keep doing that every week until he yeah. hundred that a hundred percent will be a thing. That a hundred percent will be a thing. But you know it, what's it you know what's like another thing that I'm looking forward to? This whole entire storyline that's building up with, with Braun Strowman and Shane O'Mac. Like I am <sighs> so excited for that. I, I'm oh, actually yeah. dude. Hun, 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 let me let, let, let me hun, hun, I just, let me let me let me <sighs> let, let, let me hold on. So cool. Braun Braun has something for Mania and it doesn't have to be in the title picture. Cool. Yep, exactly. Don't get me wrong. But they could do so much better with this. But Chance, so it's far, so it's been so right bad. Now. It's been so bad. Dude, he goes, oh, uh, Ron, you're just – Bro, you, you're kind of stupid. stupid. What? What? What did you just say to me? How dare you say that to me, Shane? I I'm going to give you these hands. I'm six foot want- <laughs> 400 pounds. I want an apology. But listen, if that doesn't speak – Come on, If that doesn't speak to the – If that doesn't speak more to your – snowflake generation that's kind of developed <laughs> out of nowhere i don't know what else does because I mean, that's, 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 exa- that's exactly that's exactly that- it you just <laughs> call me stupid oh my god i'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure you you. Get ex- yeah i'm gonna make sure you get exiled out of the country for calling me i'm stupid. gonna make sure that so- you smell dog poo for seven days <laughs> did you just call me stupid <laughs> i mean i uh, get the idea of braun versus shane like we said it's a high profile yeah. match Shane somehow always puts on great matches at WrestleMania. I don't, I, he, I don't know how he does it. I mean, it's probably who he's working either. with. But yeah. um, I think obviously they'll have a nice, they'll have a stipulation. Shane will jump off something really tall for no reason, and then <laughs> Bron, Bron will overcome his bully. It's just you got to give me more than why what are you, sh- dumb. But like, it's Shane. Shane. Shane's the bully now. All of a sudden, 
Uh, What's he going to bring back? The Mean Street Posse for, for a night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. In, in, what, in what world does Shane decide, I'm going to pick a fight with this dude? You know? Look at you. He's stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm literally think, looking up like this. Yeah. Storm is just going. <laughs> but I think I think when they're trying to shift, I think what they're trying to do with with Braun right now, with that like stupid shift in focus, is back to what Raw or maybe SmackDown did a few years ago when Big Show was the one getting bullied again. It's always about that a big guy getting bullied for some reason with WWE, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, I'm like, okay, at what point do you kind of just but you, 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 book, you book Strowman as this unstoppable dude that beat Goldberg exactly. at WrestleMania last yep. year. And now all of a sudden he's offended when you call him stupid. Right. Exactly. Like, I mean, I don't want to get called stupid on national television, but like, just give him a power slam and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> but, just idiot. I mean, yeah. dude, they're just. They could wrong. do some stuff with it to, you know, I give it, I give it some hope, but right now it is the least excited i am about a match that seems to be happening at mania that i have for, been in a very long time. for yeah. for raw dude i mean other than the drew sheamus thing like i personally dude i just i wasn't a fan of it this week like yeah. don't get me wrong aj versus orton very good the way that it ended very good you know you have blessed appearing in the ring you know get the pyro from the ring spots you know shout out aw fuck you a little he's dig. Hey, we can do pyro, right? He's bobbing <laughs> in the black goo and fucking gets hit with the f- phenomenal form. It was a great finish. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But at the same time, what they need to do is, is they need to for Fastlane. Drew and Sheamus have to be the thing. You have to find. Oh, they have to. We're gonna get. They have we're gonna. To. We're gonna do the Braun Strowman angle where literally Bobby Lashley's gonna defend the title against fucking Miz and Morrison at fucking Fastlane. Is that what's gonna happen? Because like they have nothing for Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Well, so, he wa- he retained the title again uh, to start the show, which was good. I mean, I guess it was one of those Miz didn't have the chance to run. He was prepared for it, yada, yada, yada. So now Lashley's your legitimate champion. Uh, it was good. I mean, you get it out of the way now. Miz can do his the stuff with Bad Bunny and Priest and stuff. Um, speaking of, they weren't even on the show. Yeah, I didn't no, see them. No. I mean, again, but, maybe you're, you want to highlight the Lashley-Miz thing a little more and not have him immediately jump into something else. Uh, and I know Morrison, isn't he still potentially dealing with a knee injury yes. or something? Yes. So they're being cautious. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yep. The other, Next- the other, the other storyline too, that I kind of like a little bit is Charlotte Flair's challenge to Mandy Rose and, and Dana Brooke. Like you got five weeks Prove me what you got. If you really want to, a shot at the title opportunity, like, well, I mean, not for nothing. Oscar's out with a concussion because of that, that, yeah, <laughs> that fat woman. <laughs> well, it wasn't Jack. even her fault. It was Baszler. <laughs> My whole yeah, but it's all Nia's always involved in some sort of fucking bullshit. Yeah, with this she's, company, she's injured dude. a lot of uh, important people, and it would suck if Oscar misses another chance to really perform at WrestleMania. I mean, my guess right now is you're going to get Charlotte versus Ripley in a rematch. Uh, for like the vacant Raw championship, yes, they keep hyping her up. Uh, the way they've been doing it since after the Rumble. I mean, you're really gonna make us wait three months for her to show up because if you haven't debuted her in the middle of March, what are you gonna do? Well, just keep in mind too that she was out of the show for a while due to immigration issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she came so, back at the Rumble, right? Yep. So I mean, I think unfortunately, if Oscar ends up not being able to perform because her, the concussion I heard is not is kind of a rough one. Yeah. Uh, if you get them in the rematch one. and the right person goes over, as in Rhea Ripley, then I'm okay with it. But if it's just another bridge for Charlotte to win at Mania, it's you're gonna get a backlash. It shouldn't yeah. be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. She's no. great, dude. She's one. She's probably the best women's performer of all time. But oh, you no gotta question. give some other people a chance. Yep. And yep. You can't keep defaulting. You know. Speaking of giving other people a chance. How about that Peyton Royce that was heartfelt good. moment on 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 Raw Talk this past week? You, someone needs to do the the was it the TikTok where it's like, oh you you don't think I'm good enough, and then they have that dramatic music hit in the background. Then let me go, and, you know. Just then she does the whole thing. I mean, it's good she finally got a chance again. She's good. Um, They've kind of done nothing with her. They said, "Oh, we're going to split up everyone's favorite female tag team in yeah. the company." And then, Iconic. <laughs> and then keep her off TV. Occasionally throw her in with another tag team in Lacey Evans. Then completely ignore that. Lacey Evans gets pregnant, and then we're just not going to do anything with Peyton Rose. So it's like, yeah, shout out Lacey Evans. Congrats on the sex. Yeah, hey, people power, dude. 
Good to you. I, I hope that that isn't Ric Flair. It is 100% not Ric Flair. <laughs> that whole thing, man. Oh, That was just so <laughs> So, for me personally, Raw needs to wow me next week. They need like, something, man. They've just been so stale as of late. It sucks because, so you I, know. I, we like Lashley. New Day is back in the title hunt. I'm sure they'll have another great match. They're getting a uh, tag title on Monday. Yep. I mean, they got some decent storylines. Like, for example, like the, the Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus storyline. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, well, that's real good. It's like, going to yeah. end at Fastlane, though, and they're going to stop Bobby versus right. Drew. Like, yeah, the they're going to they're do a number one contender match of Drew and Sheamus when it goes to Mania. Yep. Like, the Lashley storyline is good. I hope to God that, like, what so, Hunnaman, like what Hunnaman just said about Charlotte versus Rhea Ripley, like, I hope to God that that happens. If Asuka like, can't story. perform... I, right. you, I think you got you just so made it's a great storyline. But yeah. other than yeah. that, that you only got three storylines for a three-hour show. What's the point of that? The rest is filler, as they everyone likes exactly. to say. It's just, it's so long. It's t- it's I enjoy it because I love wrestling, of course. Right. But some when the, you're giving me the stuff like Strowman and Shane, when I really should yeah. care about it because of the names involved, and I'm just seeing them come out twice in the same night. And even even the Seth Rollins versus Silas for an apology. Like, it's like. Wrong show, wrong show, wrong We're show. We're not there wrong yet. Show, wrong show. <laughs> no, it's not. It's WWE. I, it, it, it's WWE, and we're going to talk about Friday. Wrong like. show, wrong show. We're only on Monday. Now we're going to Wednesday. Because well, Mondays are stale. Let's going to Wednesday. jump already into Friday. <laughs> no, we're going to Wednesdays first. NXT. Oh, that's right. Very, very that's good. good NXT, by the yep. way. Very good NXT. Yeah. Um, Real announce has two big announcements. The first one is the fact that they're doing a two-night takeover event. Wednesday on USA Network and then Thursday on Peacock. Give Jones, give the give the viewers that uh, that WrestleMania week calendar. I know it's been out there now, but Ooh. that was uh, that they really did some stuff there. That WrestleMania week calendar start off Monday night. You got Raw. Tuesday night you got the, the Hall of Fame class for 2020 2021. Mm-hmm. Wednesday night you got night one of NXT Takeover on USA. Uh, night two is Thursday on Peacock. Friday night you got SmackDown. Saturday you have night one of WrestleMania. Sunday, you have night two of WrestleMania. Jam packed week uh, least, of wrestling. At least I got stuff to watch, you know? And then the second major announcement for them was they, were, they um, solidified the NXT is now getting women's tag team champions. And he awarded it to um, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, who won the Dusty Cup, got screwed over last week against Baszler and Jax. So they did that. I still just wish they just made. The, the winning person of the the winning team of the the tournament win the titles there, you know it's just it just felt like one of those things where they didn't really think it through. Right. But if you had a whole title belt designed, what in what world would you? I mean, I don't know. I like how they introduced it. They deserved it. Um, and then obviously what happened on NXT was interesting, and it sets up yeah. a lot of other stuff. So mm-hmm. carry on, Jones. I'm sorry. I'll... No, you're good. So basically, they had the NXT Women's Title match. It was Io Shirai defending against Tony Storm. Um, they fought. In the triple threat match, including Mercedes Martinez at the last pay per view, um, Stormfield slighted. She called the Shirai out. Shirai's like, "Okay, I'll beat you one on one." Shirai beats her one on one, retains the title. It was a very good match there. I honestly thought to start off the show after the big announcement to start off with that it was very good. It was a very good. It was a high paced match, and then it's we started the slow decline. Um, like <clears throat> La Knight came out. Um, and basically mocked Bronson Reed. So that's going to be his first feud. It his looks like it's going to be Bronson Reed. So that, mm-hmm. we'll probably see that at uh, NXT TakeOver. Then you yeah, had Pete, got two nights to fill now. So he had Pete Dunn versus Jake Atlas. It was a squash match. It was basically to make Dunn look phenomenal. Uh, he grabbed a mic, a mic and reminded everybody that he is the best technical wrestler in the world and wanted someone to prove him wrong. Okay. So he looks like he's he's got his eyes set on the NXT title still. Then you move down the card. You had the women's tag team championships. Yes, they defended it. Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez took on Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart for the titles. It's a rematch of the Dusty Cup final. Moon and Blackheart win. They become the second ever NXT women's tag team mm-hmm. championships. And people are like, well, why do you give Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez the tag titles in the first place? Here's why. You set it up. You have them lose it. Backstage, you know, they get interviewed and – uh, all of a sudden, Io Shirai comes up, writes to Raquel Gonzalez, and says, I want you next. So get ready because that's going to be at NXT TakeOver, and that's going to be fire because Raquel that's Gonzalez – That's one of the main events for one of the nights. Easily. 100%. Raquel yeah. Gonzalez is going to beat Io Shirai for the title. 
Guaranteed. Oh, yeah. Has to be. Guaranteed. Then you had, she uh, it. You had Caden Carter versus the Elite. It's a squash match. Um, it was basically to get uh, Katanzaro payback for what happened last week. Um, I like Lee, though. She's I like her Lee, gimmick. Lee's very good. Uh, I think they're going to build her versus Katanzaro for a while. But mm-hmm. don't be surprised if Lee is going to be, like, the first one that fights Raquel Gonzalez afterwards. Yep. Uh, then you got the Grizzled Young Vets versus Legado Del Fantasma. Another one where it's just kind of a filler. It wasn't it wasn't great, not gonna lie. Um I think yeah, Legado Del Fantasma won. Um and then afterward they had Jordan Devlin do an interview of him showing him on the plane coming. He was the NXT Cruiserweight Championship, but because of the pandemic, he couldn't come to defend it. So basically what they did was they made Escobar the interim and now that's going to be a match for the uh and they're gonna unify mm-hmm. yep which will be a great match because they're both fantastic exactly mm-hmm. then the main event of the evening finn balor versus adam cole it was a very listen from for start to the finish NXT championship yep don't forget for the nxt championship start to finish very good um ballas and cole outside cole looked up it looked like you saw a ghost it was just kyle o'reilly kyle o'reilly Basically, stored, uh, stared him down. Cole went back into the ring, and he <clears throat> got hit with uh, what was it, the nineteen sixteen, yep. and then literally up into the coup de gras. Ballard retains. O'Reilly comes into the ring, rips the undisputed armband off Cole, um, and then literally you have them going into the back, and you have Finn Balor with the NXT title on the shoulder, and the first thing comes out of his mouth saying, "What took you so long?" And he and looks over, over, and it's <gasps> it's. It's him and Karrion Cross, And he just does the... Me, you. <laughs> so, another another great ending to a show this week on a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, I think NXT is kind of low-key backing themselves into a corner here. Um, their cross is starting to become... Uh, our, our buddy said this to us, and I'm going to use it right now. It's starting to become like a, the Braun Strowman of NXT. He looks very good and very powerful. He doesn't need to be in the title contention, but when you put him mm-hmm. in it and he loses, his value just goes down. So it doesn't I look mean, the whole thing is he hasn't had a, he hadn't had a rematch when he had to drop the title, which then Balor ended up winning in that fatal four way back in like mm-hmm. it was a summer. Yeah, I He's think been so. champion for a while. Um Agreed. so I mean it's good they're finally getting the match. I just I'm just I don't know so what you for, do. for me, I I have a weird feeling they're gonna do it on an NXT. And there's gonna be fucker who repeat done interferes, and then all of a sudden we're gonna get Walter from NXT UK come out, set it, sets up that triple threat match for for a night, and then Ballard, the winner of that would face Karen Cross the following night mm-hmm. for the title. That's well, what Walter's I think. Walter's right still now. the UK champ, so it's like that's another match you can have at one of the WrestleMania nights if they're gonna bring in NXT UK, which I don't. I mean, I don't know if they will. <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know, know man. They have so many different scenarios that they, they can have go a lot with. they can do. So I mean, it's in t- it's intriguing, and then you hope that they don't screw certain people over that deserve it. Uh, but you know, there's there's a lot of talent, so not everyone gets you know what they deserve. Yeah. Uh, also, real quick, I completely forgot about this um, when we talk about Diamond. But you remember in the middle of um, what match was it? It was Ethan Page and Lee Johnson. All of a sudden. You just, you just heard music playing. I didn't forget about it. I just didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> you like, there's just the random whole, music in the background. They had Ain't No Mountain High Enough playing while the commentary team's trying to tell you about the match. <laughs> I loved it. It was like it was like it was an NBA game and TNT was just bumping yeah. in the sound. Yeah. And it was, I, I had to text Jones and be like, dude, are you, are you, are you hearing this? Is my TV broken? <laughs> And I looked, and I was like, "No, nah, dude, I, I'm hearing it word for word. <laughs> Fucking wild right now." But in their defense, <laughs> Tony Khan then went on Twitter, addressed it, said, "Hey, we're gonna upload the full match onto YouTube so you can hear everything." Sorry about that. And then, boom, he just made it right immediately. Smart. And it wasn't All their right. fault; it was TNT. So. <clears throat> All right, suplex me, Daddy. You ready for talk about Friday night now? <laughs> yeah, come you here. Sure? Come, come say some come. words. Yeah, come, 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 come say, come say, come, come say here. the words. Will come sit with Daddy. Come here. <laughs> it's already the weekend. I'm ready to just drink. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I so would if I could. Let's let's talk some SmackDown. To end off the show real quick. Um, so basically, they they basically started with Edge arriving to address Roman versus Daniel. Honestly, this is going to be fantastic because this is just going to set up Hanuman. 
we've talked about this. It's going to set up Roman versus Edge versus Brian at WrestleMania. And yep. Hahnemann has a theory or um, a thought about what's going to happen there. So real quick, would you uh, hit that? Well, just the on results the that we had discussed a little bit prior. Yep. Uh, I mean, I think you're going to get chicanery, Brian. Then you get your triple threat at WrestleMania. Edge ends up beating Daniel Bryan, not Roman. So Roman doesn't necessarily lose his title. And then at, I think, it, at whatever the first pay-per-view is, it might even be Money in the Bank right after WrestleMania. Uh, whatever they're going to they're gonna do Roman versus Bryan, number one contenders match. And then you get Roman beating Edge to get his title back. And to me, I like it because Roman isn't going to look bad. I mean, again, he wasn't involved in the finish. Uh, he's going to be out for vengeance to get his title back. Uh, again, we're saying like it's concrete, which I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's the right move. Um, and now Roman will get his title reigns broken up and not be a champion for like two plus years in a row. Because they, you can't do that because if you break it up and you say, oh, Roman's been champion for 487 days. They're like, oh, this is, this is awful. He's just, it's the same thing all the time. He's already gotten like eight months. Now they're going to break it up. He's probably going to get another six to eight. So I like it. It's, it's what they did with Drew when they had Orton win at Hell in a Cell. Uh, yep. Broke it up. And it'll be good to give Edge's moment, I think. Uh, you kind of – I think you should. I mean, he's given a lot to the business and everything like that. And as long as it's in turn him putting over Roman in a single match, then it's, it's perfect. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. All right. Um, suplex me, Daddy. You ready back. to talk? You ready to talk about uh, ready to talk about SmackDown with us? Get over here! <laughs> I've been here. You guys have just been front and center of the. It's three hosts, not two. So I'm just I, I'm just here to be uh, you know, the note taker and uh, Let's talk about talk talk to me about Cesaro. Take notes on Rollins. this. Give me. <laughs> talk, to me, talk to me about the Cesaro Seth Rollins driver that you were going over. It's just I don't know. I I love Cesaro a lot. I think he's one of those like really underutilized um talents the SmackDown has. Like I really would like to see him in like a main event situation and yep. be given be given a bigger boost. But it continues to be Seth Rollins, the, like the focal point of things. Like Cesaro defeated, um, I think it was Murphy. If I'm not- yep. yep. Yeah, it was Murphy. And then all you all you can hear is in the back in the backstage, uh, Seth Rollins basically giving giving up on the on the whole thing, being like, ah, uh, you know, I got better things to do. Like, where where does that go from now then? Like, I mean, what, you're gonna get them at Fastlane. You have to. You know, like, yeah, like I would love to at least see that at Fastlane. But after that, then what's this, what's next with Cesaro after that? You know, Seth so. Rollins still in WrestleMania. They're right. gonna create. They're gonna create it into a little bit of rivalry. I think it's not gonna go as long as Rollins versus Ray, hopefully. But I think it's going to be oh, something God, I that's. <laughs> I think it's just gonna be something that solidifies Cesaro's place in WWE at this very moment as a guy who can contend for a main event spot, mm-hmm. which we all have agreed on. We just, we just want it we to need happen, to see it, you know, mm-hmm. just once, once it's, it's really like the Kofi mania storyline. He never had a one-on-one title match, right? Cesaro deserves it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing them getting thrown into the intercontinental title stuff, but uh, it looks like that, that feels super crowded right now too. It is. Yeah. You know, the main event is, you know, it's Roman, um, Brian and Edge, yeah, and then uh, as of right now, there's like eight people that you got to intertwine right now, so I don't know exactly what they're gonna do. Yeah, what do you got? You got Cruz, you got E, you got Cruz, um, E. I mean, you can do Rollins, Cesaro, uh, Nakamura, even Jey Uso. Um, yeah. then you Sammy have Zane, um, Corbin, Kevin yeah. Owens, like they got a lot, and they've they've started to hint at Owens and Zane teaming up, which is lovely. I mean, I'd be I nice to see that. them get back on the same I would page. love that. Imagine them being spanned on tag team champions. Oh, I, I, I don't care what all of the character development they've done in the last month for the tag division. Do that right to the top. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, SmackDown was, SmackDown was good. Don't get me wrong. I thought mm. the the Big East and um, Sami Zayn match was great. Um, and then the segment after, obviously, with Big Cruz. Big E gave a nice little promo. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. With, Cru- with, with Cruz um, coming back and, you know, keeping his momentum going as the heel. 
Yep. Um, and now the fact that we're going to get them on at fast lane, it looks like yep. um, just just very grateful for it and ready for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, the, I the other thing that was the something I feel like we could – they still know Jimmy Uso, unfortunately, but they had Edge chat with Jay backstage and kind of try to plant that dissension in the ranks thing with him and Roman. Uh, Jay stayed loyal, but, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see if they build anything off of that. Um, with Christian leaving, the other thing that could be kind of cool is if you got uh, Jimmy kind of being like, I don't like this shit. Like, you know, let's Edge, let's, let's, let's get my brother back. And then kind of do a little, <laughs> do a little tiff. But I don't know, man. It's they have a lot of stuff they can do. The Zane Corbin thing, like you said last week, I don't quite get it. Um, obviously, you still have Bel Air and Sasha going at it. They were on the Kevin Owens show, which is good. Kevin Owens made sure to make sure he's reading off his cards, which was kind of funny. Uh, and then the t- I, yeah, you know, go ahead, man. I just I'm a little burned out. I think this week, so I don't have I I'm a little scatterbrained. Diego. You? <laughs> <laughs> Just perfect timing. That's excellent. That's how you love it. Oh my god. No, I, I, I agree with Hyman. I mean there's just overall, like in terms of the full aspect of wrestling, there's just so much going on. And I absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. I even I would even dare to say that like SmackDown right now is actually d- doing a really good job too in hyping all their superstars. But on top of that, like the storylines that they've developed along with the women's division as well like the Sasha Banks um Belair Nia Jax I mean they had them lose to Natalia and Tamina this week which was kind of yeah. a uh, I mean I get it because it keeps teasing the dissension between yeah. Sasha and Belair yeah. get Tamina off my fucking television dude she looks please. like she lost some weight and can move I don't care get her off my television get her off my television no <laughs> I'd no. much rather deal with Tamina than with Nia. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I oh, well, yeah, obviously. She's not going to injure everybody. I'd rather I'd rather do with a lot of people than Nia Jax, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, like I said, like I said, and even this Reginald segment, like, he's – Dude, I like a, the fashion show. I don't yeah, know. He's, be, he's becoming such a center coin of, like – I'm goofy. telling you, dude. I'm telling you. It. As long as he doesn't fuck up Sasha versus Bianca or Mania, I, 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 I'm in him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and I mean, I, you can do. Who, who did I just say? You can do. I mean, if you really want to do the woman's one, that's the woman's tag one for sure. Would need to be like a multi team, I feel like. But if you gave Natalia and Tamina their win, you get them against Baszler and Jax, and then maybe get Rose and Brooke. Ah, they got to do something because those titles just kind of seem. Nah. <laughs> just like the twenty four seven. Got it. Yeah. Idea. The only like storyline that I would say that needs a little bit of retooling or maybe a shift in focus is the Street Profits. A little sprinkle. Yeah, the Street Profits, Dominic and Ray Mysterio, Dirt Dogs, and Alpha Academy thing. Like th- that just needs a little bit of retooling because th- there is a lot of talent all across. Like mm-hmm. the Street Profits are so good at promos. They're they're freaking oh, they're fantastic. Yeah. Ray Mysterio, Ray Mysterio could take Dominic into newer heights. Dominic mm-hmm. is just Dominic has been like literally the beginning of Apollo Course, where he was given opportunity over opportunity, but he just blew it. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, he's got a long way to go. He's young as heck, though. And I mean it's good exactly. to get him hopefully get him established while Ray's around. Yeah. I mean, my, I feel like I think this he's is, my age. He might be younger, dude. He might be like a lot younger. Three. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's wicked young. Um, I think you could get that again, there's so many oh. options for multi team, multi man matches at Mania. I hope they do it. Even at Fastlane, they could do a Fatal Four way team match with those four teams that you had on SmackDown. I mean, I, w- I wouldn't even mind uh, Dominic's sister coming back into the storyline of things. That's gone. <laughs> Kaput. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we thought of it. That's where I'm sure I thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, before we go off topic, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, any final thoughts on the week before we. Kind of just can it on episode three. No, I mean, there's a lot to cover. There's not necessarily much we can predict right now because it all kind of seems to be there. Uh, I'm still enjoying it. It's a, again, it's a lot of product to watch every week, but we yep. are committed. We're here to deliver you the best, closest, most up to date news. <laughs> Is it news? Is it real? Is it entertainment? Um, Who knows so... anymore? <laughs> 
this is I'm uh, honestly not for nothing. I'm honestly here just for Diego's nicknames every week. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, <laughs> dude, last week he had top row munchkin. This week suplex me daddy. I'm in. I gotta think about some better ones, you know. Yeah, big, but we big have, moves. We have a lot to look forward to, I think. And I know they keep kind of dropping some stuff and like even if the matchup itself is intriguing, the storyline itself might not be. So you just got to hope with WrestleMania, they tend to up their game. So um, I'm here for the ride as always. Uh, might need a vacation after WrestleMania week because uh, that's <laughs> six, but it's, seven straight days. But That's so difficult to get a vacation out of WrestleMania <laughs> like right after because then you got money in the bank. You got mm-hmm. backlash. You also got, I think it's Extreme Rules, if I'm not mistaken. That's yep. afterwards. However, they decide to do it this year. Yeah. And then you got freaking SummerSlam as well, which could also be the very first pay per view in which actual fans <laughs> might be back into. Well, if they go to Texas, they can just do it at the Rangers Stadium because they're going to be at 100% capacity. Yeah. It's outside. So, you know. Dude, come on. Who goes to a Texas Rangers game? <laughs> Uh, not me. Yeah, uh, exactly. Maybe Diego, a, you get- maybe a Rod just to cheat on J Lo once again. Hey, 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 we're not TMZ. Hey, All right. hey, 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 hey. You leave the A Rod slander out of this right now. We'll talk about that in another podcast. Just how do you cheat on J Lo? It's J Lo. You want to know how? You uh, fuck someone else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna end it there. So obviously, you know, make sure you check everything on Couch Guy Sports. Uh, Make sure you check us out on Twitter at Suplex Biddies. Before I know it's preliminary, I don't know if I should even mention it on screen, but there is some talk that I'm discussing with the boys about bringing a uh, Suplex Biddies championship into the fold, whether it's our predictions records or basic uh, challenges of some sort. We're going to start trying to add a little extra umph and make you care about our punishments in the end. Um, People love suffering, so we're going to do something there as long as uh, Jones will eat a vegetable. But uh, <laughs> oh, just put that some that on that face, will you? <laughs> <laughs> it's something down the line, but we're hoping to do a little extra stuff, and we don't want to be the guys that just recap everything. Yeah. So we want to broaden out and get it going, maybe even bring in the, some other you know people on our network and uh, do some cross-promotion and everything, so. Yes, sir. I know people don't like to make YouTube comments very often, but feel free to let us know if you even enjoy our voices. If you want me to fix mine, I can talk. I have, I have some, like, I can go up, I can go down and pitch. If you want um, me to talk like this, so you'll you let talk me know. Like <laughs> <laughs> but just let us know uh, how we're doing so far. We're happy to do this. We enjoy each other's company. We enjoy the product. For the majority. So, um, yeah. yeah, for the most part. And we're uh, happy for anyone that's along on that ride. Yeah. No, so make sure you guys are obviously following the YouTube page, Couch Guy Sports, which we are a part of. Make sure you're looking at all the articles on CouchGuysports.com. You're following them on Twitter at Couch Guy Sports. You're following Diego the DJ at Diego underscore the DJ. You're following Honeyman at Andrew Honeybun. You're following myself, C Jones, who 1212. Also following the podcast at Suplex Biddies. For episode three, we're signing off. We'll see you guys next week as we give Time you. Time for leg day, Jones. You ready? Fast lane prediction. My legs are on fire, dude. I'm See ready. You later. Squats, baby. <laughs>